This is Precalculus Concept 36F, last video of the year. Woo -hoo. Um, this is going to involve limits again, but this time limits involving infinity. Um, this is a concept we've talked about this year already. Um, just the notation will be a little bit different. So here's the problem we're going to look at. Uh, what's the limit as x approaches infinity? So instead of a number here, we have this infinitely big number of a following the expression, something like this. All right. So a good first step might be to pull out our calculator, make a table of values, and see what the behavior of this is. So let's take a minute and do that. All right, so big difference here is how we set our table up. The starting point is less important because you can kind of start anywhere. But what's really important is that your step size, instead of being really, really, really small, should be really, really, really big. What I want to investigate is x becoming larger and larger and larger and larger. So I picked 100, but you might even want to do 1,000 or 10,000. Um, but 100 is a good, good uh, base value. All right, and then you have a, your table, and you basically want to just scroll down until you're pretty confident that you're getting uh, sufficiently large to tell what the pattern is in the y values. If you're not sure, you can just keep scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, or plug in larger and larger and larger numbers. But what ends up happening is this is equal to 2, right? If you remember some of the stuff from earlier in the year, you should remember the end behavior of a rational function um, is this idea of what happens when x gets larger and larger and larger. So you may remember this, that as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches notation. And that's just a, a introductory way to do limits. And so from now on out, you'll probably see it worded like this, but it means the exact same thing. So this is where the top heavy, bottom heavy strategy comes in. So since I have x cubed in both the top and the bottom, then the answer to this problem is going to be the leading coefficients. So if you remember that, you wouldn't actually need your calculator at all. Calculator is always a good resource if you get stuck on a limit problem. All right, let's try another one. Let's see if we can do this without your calculator. What would happen if you plug in very, very, very large numbers to an expression like this? Okay, hopefully you remember to kind of compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. And clearly in this one, the denominator is a much, is a, is a bigger degree than the numerator, which means for large numbers, the denominator will be much, 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 much bigger than the numerator. The numerator is always two. And so um, the answer to this is zero, right? So good summary is to remember that if you have a rational function that's top heavy, that the, lim the limit will not exist. And if it's bottom heavy, then the limit will always be zero. And then if they're equally, or equal powers is a good way to think about it, on the numerator and the denominator, then the limit will be the ratio of the leading coefficients. I'll write that out, ratio of leading coefficients. This is something you've already studied. The only thing that's really new is um, the limit notation. But it's that same idea of what happens for really, really large numbers. So once again, this example is a bottom heavy function, and therefore it's the zero answer right here. Okay, one more to talk about. Um, this is the top heavy case, right? If you thought about plugging in numbers, they both, the numerator and the denominator both get big, but the numerator, because it's a higher power, gets much bigger, much faster. And so you'd have a big number on the bottom, but you'd have a really big number on the top. And the end behavior would be um, infinity. So you can actually answer this with infinity, or you can just say that there is no limit. The limit doesn't exist. It just means that the graph goes either um, shooting up like this or shooting down like this. And in this case, um, bigger numbers would give you very large positive answers. 
Um, back in first semester, we did the entire graph of the asymptotes and all that stuff. But the limits to infinity just have to do with the end behavior. All right, the last you try of the year. Think carefully. I'd love to see everyone get this right. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared plus x minus 5 all over 2x squared plus 1? Let's hope everybody got it. The answer for this one is 3 halves. These, this is a problem where you have equal powers on the numerator and the denominator. So our i should go to the coefficients. And 3 halves is your answer. As a last resort, you could use your calculator and double check. But your calculator would also show the bigger x gets, the closer the function gets to 1 and a half. Thanks for a great year, everybody. This is our last video we'll be reviewing this chapter and then reviewing the semester before your final in a couple weeks